Hi everyone, my name is Danny Phoenix Kane, aka Tourette Researcher, and I am back for another video. I am very excited today as this video marks the first as an official PhD student looking into the diagnostic journey and support of adults with Tourette's in the UK. So to kick us off, uh, I read Welcome to Biscuit Land by Jessica Thorne, aka Tourette Hero. As ever, this review is my own interpretation of what I thought to be a really insightful look into the year in the life of Jess and what it is like day to day to live with Tourette's. So who is Tourette's hero and what is her Tourette's like? Well, to start with, Jess is an inspirational person who has embraced having Tourette's and as the name suggests, has made it her creative superpower. She started having tics since childhood, around six or seven, though, like myself, her tics got worse with age and actually progresses through the book where she captures how her tic attacks worsen and the new challenges that brings. What I really liked as well is that she creatively captures how this affects her everyday tasks the sensations, distinctive intrinsic nature of these tics, and sometimes being unaware of the source or trigger. Her physical motor tics include thumping her chest, head banging and dropping to the floor. She also has vocal tics with her most famous ones being biscuit related. She also highlights many of the less publicized symptoms of Tourette's, uh, the waxing, waning and changing nature how they can affect sleep and the pain and injury of the condition. So the next thing the book highlights is what was her diagnosis like? In terms of her diagnosis, it was interesting to read that her mother was the first to say that she might have Tourette's. However, having lived with it for a sustained amount of time without a proper diagnosis, Jess didn't see it necessary to seek one until later on after the 18 year mark. I wonder as well if the delay was also because Tourette's wasn't commonly known at the time and even the neurologist told her she was just a clumsy uncoordinated child. She mentioned that her belief for a long time was that she con if she concentrated a little harder that they would be able to make it stop. However, the turning point in the face of increased impact on her life was her friend asking how can I explain your twitching to my friends when you meet them? Although I sense reluctancy, like I did when I felt like I'd just given in to tics, she doesn't regret getting the diagnosis and it has allowed her better access to the support she needs. The support comes in a variety of forms and she recounts both the positive and negative encounters with medication, treatment and clinicians. Lastly, how does Tourette's affect her socially? The main takeaway from the book for me was to do with the social challenges and personal advocacy. That she worries that her personality can get lost in Tourette's and how she has to explain and make the extra effort to let actions speak louder than words. How the public interact with her, for example, and sadly, I believe this is the case with a few disabilities, that people turn to support workers or friends first to address her or ask questions when she is right there. How some of the public help or hinder in life interactions. The, what questions people ask and what they say. Some of the most impactful to me were, I don't believe in Tourette's. How do you get those bad words into your head? You must be bad or someone must have put them there. Why don't you get any cases of nice Tourette's? Are you spastic, disturbed, intoxicated? And uh, my favorite, if you can call it that, if you don't have the exorcism, you will end up with cerebral palsy. This book, I believe, really captures an important look into living with Tourette's and highlights the social challenges that those with the condition have to go through. What I love and she purposefully tries to avoid is making this into a narrative of pity. Rather, this is a narrative of genuine life experience 
and the journey she has taken to embrace the condition, the struggles, the creativity, humour and joy. This book, I believe, is a must read for all. So that is it for me today and I look forward to continuing and sharing my own journey of this condition with you.